Thanks. Together. Stay. Every time I touch the mic, this man's getting silly cause it's monkey time Wu Kong and a Diddy, I'm a funky guy Shape shift, do it tricky, give a customize It's nothing like the sound, what we brush the side I run them like I won every monster fight Like what a guy is done in a supper time Cause I'm on more levels like construction sites huh? Gonna cause a scene in heaven Give that stick in my body, that's a lethal weapon And I'm sick of these guys who wanna teach a lesson They just want immortal, they ain't beating seven And I send them out spirits through a deep depression Grace say, say I'm equal to the beast they mentioned 500 years as a pre suspension Say they get into the bread, it's a yeast infection I'm losing my leather cause I was born from it Call me a savior, you can't be more honest They had to crackers, we're gonna talk Grommets, this is a legacy, not a short Sonnet, way that I trend on the topic Great from my birth to the day that I rest like a rocket Hate on the best in the office Making my mess, so I pay my respect to the prophets Hey guys, Rev here. In this video, I'll be teaching you everything that you need to know to start climbing on Winston, which is, in my opinion, one of the best beginner characters in the game. This video is mostly intended for noobs, but I also talk about more advanced topics such as tags, playstyles, and counters in later sections of the video, and there are timestamps for that if that's all you're interested in. With all that said and done, let's start with the absolute basics, Winston's stats. Winston has a total of 625 HP in roll queue with 375 base health and 250 armor health. And if you don't already know, armor works just like regular health, but decreases the damage taken by 30%. As a tank, Winston also has a tank passive, which reduces the knockback he takes as well as the ultimate generation he gives from both healing and damage by 30%. And you'll definitely get used to his health pool as you play him more, he's definitely not the tankiest character in the game, but his abilities more than make up for that. Okay, now that we've covered the complete basics, let's talk about Winston's Tesla Cannon. With Overwatch 2, Winston now has two forms of fire. His primary fire shoots electricity in a small 45 degree area for 8 meters in front of him. This ability does 75 DPS and uses 20 ammo per second. This means that you can shoot for a maximum of 5 seconds straight before all 100 bullets are used, totaling to 375 single target damage in one magazine. And including the 1.7 second reload time, Winston's primary fire DPS is around 60, which is lower than Mora's. Let's 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 go, Blizzard. Let's let's go. Woo! Okay, okay, that might sound disappointing. It might make you want to quit playing Winston. Like, bro, this guy does less damage than a he healer, but but it does have some special properties that make this weapon very unique. First of all. Winston Tesla Cannon is able to attack multiple characters at once, similar to Junker Queen's Carnage, which means you're able to quickly do large amounts of damage and get large amounts of ult charge by cleaving through multiple enemies. And Tesla Cannon also ignores armor, which means you don't have to worry about that 30% damage resistance that most tanks have, which is pretty neat. And the last important thing to take note of is that Winston's fire is not stopped during the animation for casting his barrier, which means you can shoot while placing your bubble, which just helps make you a little bit less vulnerable during the dive. Now, the biggest weakness of Winston's primary fire is obviously its range. It's only 8 meters, and the damage is pretty low. However, this is a problem that has been solved in Overwatch 2, since Winston received a new ability in the form of a secondary fire. By charging his Tesla cannon, Winston is able to release a wave of focused electricity at up to 40 meters away. And this weapon is actually pretty generous, it has a decent hitbox of 0.33 meters, which is more than 6 times the size of Widow's Sniper. But to make up for it, the weapon doesn't have very high damage output, maxing out at 50 damage while fully charged, no headshots at all, and a 0.75 second recovery time after using the ability which is applied on top of the one second it takes to charge ability. This means that fully charged, the maximum amount of damage per second that you can do is only 28.6, which is a, a little bit pitiful, but we'll get into some specific text later on that will help out with this. And a couple last notes that I wanted to mention. While Winston's second fire normally uses up to 12 ammo, you can still do the 50 damage after only charging it up to 10, which means you can get a couple extra shots in per magazine. And additionally, you can't use your shield or melee while charging the ability since it would cancel it, so you have to wait for those first. Okay, now that I've been yapping for 4 minutes, really quick, please consider subscribing maybe, it'll really help me out. Okay, that's it, I'm, I'm not gonna waste too much of your time, let's keep going. So, every tank in this game has a unique way to recover health or avoid taking damage. 
In Winston's case, this is through his bubble, or the barrier projector. When this ability is used, Winston deploys a 650 HP circular shield with a 5 meter radius that he and his team can shoot through. The cooldown is 12 seconds, but it starts from the moment the ability is used, meaning that it'll be back up 4 seconds after the barrier's duration ends if it isn't broken early. And the only thing that you need to know about the barrier is that there's a 0.13 second delay before it being used and actually activating, and during that time you can take full damage. So if you're trying to dodge a certain ability, you might want to be aware of that. Okay, now onto Winston's movement ability, the jump pack. This ability is really strong. When used, Winston launches up into the air, damaging any enemies that he lands within 5 meters of in the process, for up to 50 damage. While the ability looks pretty simple at first, it's actually really hard to master, and I'll do my best to explain how you can best use it here. First of all, your movement directly before jumping will affect how far Winston will go. So if you stand still, you'll do a medium distance jump. Now if you move backwards, you'll do a short jump, which is useful if you're trying to do some extra damage near the end of a fight to confirm a kill. And if you're moving forwards, you'll do a far jump, which is what you'll be doing mostly if you're trying to dive someone. You can further control your jump after activating it in the same way, increasing your jump distance by holding forward or shortening it by moving backwards. Secondly, your view angle will also affect the direction you go. So if you face upwards, you'll jump up, for example. And all of these tags give you quite a lot of control over Winston's movement, but they're the hardest part to master outside from his ultimate. Which reminds me, let's talk about Winston's ultimate now. Primal Rage. This ultimate gives Winston 500 extra health, instantly heals him, and also replaces his weapon's fire with a new punch, and also lowers the cooldown of his jump. Winston also gets a 30% movement speed buff for the 10 seconds that he's ulting, which does affect how his jump pack works, and you also get the jump pack cooldown reset whenever you ult and after your ult ends, so if you need to touch point, it might be worth using your ultimate to get there quicker, and you might also want to use your jump just before the ult ends so you get two jumps to escape. Okay, now I'll give a quick notice about some settings that you might want to change. Changing these settings isn't necessary, but it makes getting Winston's sex down a little bit more consistent in my opinion. So, all you have to do is go to your hero settings and make sure that primary fire cancels secondary fire is off. That's the only setting you really have to change on Winston to help play a little bit better. So with that said and done, let's move on to the techs. As you probably know by now, Winston normally has relatively low damage, so being able to do a powerful burst is important for the character and this first tech addresses that issue. So first, you should know that Winston is able to leap and then use his melee right before it lands to cancel that melee animation. This can be comboed by charging your right click in the air. When you use all three abilities and land right in front of your enemy, it combos to up to 130 damage at once. So if you were poking an enemy and they're around half health, you're able to instantly finish them off without having to use your bubble to do a full dive. I personally recommend that you practice this tech pretty often so you get the timing right, and after that, it'll eventually become common nature for you. Now onto Winston's second tech, Bubble Dancing. I talked about this a bit before, but I want to show you how to properly do it. When fighting an opponent, you can go in and out of your bubble in order to avoid taking damage. When your enemy is in the bubble, you want to walk out of it, and when they're out of the bubble, you want to walk back in. Using this tech, you're even able to 1v1 an enemy reaper in certain conditions, since he won't be able to do any damage to you, meaning that his passive won't kick in. The biggest thing to know when you start bubble dancing is that normally, your bubble is placed right under you after you use the ability, so you have to walk to the border to start bubble dancing. However, if you're trying to do a full dive, you can use your jump pack and hold the spacebar while going down, and place the bubble the second you initially land. If you hold your jump button after you use the jump pack, this will give you a second little hop, which will take you right to the edge of the border, which makes bubble dancing from the beginning of the dive way easier. Okay, the next tech that I'll be talking about is alternating your firing types. On Winston, you're able to swap between your primary fire, Tesla cannon, and your melee, and this will actually give you an overall higher damage per second, since you're able to shoot for significantly longer without having to reload. And this is especially useful if you're fighting someone who has quite a lot of health, as well as against targets who are being healed, so you'll be able to keep up pressure for longer. Okay, now for the last and most important tech on Winston. This tech is what separates good Winston players from great ones. 
juggling. Now, while Senyata is famous for saying, I will not juggle. Juggling is an integral part of Winston's kit. This ability takes hundreds if not thousands of hours to fully master, but the complete basics aren't really that difficult. So that's all that I'll be explaining in this section of the video. First, I'll give a quick demonstration of juggling, and then I'll show you what I do step by step. As you can see it there, I start by using my primary fire, then wait slightly, then do a long jump, and press and hold the primary fire again for the second and third shots while landing. This combo is pretty simple, but causes a lot of knockback and some good damage, which makes it useful for getting environmental kills, or knocking enemies into walls or away from their team to help confirm kills. Of course, this is just a basic overview, and juggling gets way more difficult than this, but as a beginner, this is all you really need to know of juggling to get a lot of value out of your ult. But for now, let's just move on to talking about Winston's playstyle. Winston, like other dive tanks, has a pretty unique playstyle from the typical tank role in video games. Winston has two main phases, the poke phase and the dive phase. Poking is pretty self-explanatory. Winston uses his secondary fire ability to do some spam damage, and in the process, you'll also look for low health or out of position targets that you're able to dive, especially characters that are considered key targets. Now, I won't go into specific of what a key target is, but basically, a key target is any character, especially a character in the support role, with low movement ability that you'll get a lot of value from picking off. For example, a Senyara or an Ana. Okay, now to the dive phase. This phase is a little bit less simple than poking. Diving is split up into three parts. Scouting, setting up, and then soft and hard dives. Before I talk about these three parts, I'll give you some keynotes. First, if you can dive without using your jump, that's usually what you want to do. For example, you can either jump forward here in this point in Hollywood, or go through the high ground before jumping. This leaves you with access to your jump cooldown, which makes getting out way easier. That's not all you should worry about when diving though. You also want to make sure that your supports have line of sight of you. In general, you should be checking the position of your supports before you dive, since it'll help you come up with a fallback plan. You can still dive if you don't have support line of sight, but it's important to know that you won't be getting healed, so bubble dancing is key. Okay, now we can talk about the first phase of diving, the scouting phase. As I mentioned earlier, scouting is pretty simple and it's part of what you do during the poke phase. You just look around, try to find any low health or out of position targets that you can dive, and then try to coordinate with your team if possible to help confirm that kill. And these actions are split between the setup and the dive phase. Okay, I'll briefly cover setting up now. When setting up, you want to coordinate with your team if possible to make a decent dive. For example, you want to keep line of sight of your healers, and also want to make sure that your DPS, if possible, can dive with you. So if you have a Genji, let him know in comms you're gonna dive, and say something like 3, 2, 1 ahead of time so he knows when you're going in. You also want to make sure that you have an idea of how you're going to get out, as well as how you're going to get in. Remember that you don't always have to use your jump to dive, you can just walk sometimes, honestly. Okay, with all that briefly covered, I'll talk a little bit more in depth about the dive phase now. Diving is split up into two forms, soft and hard dives. Soft dives are when you dive to take up some space and do a little bit of damage, but usually without using any long cooldowns such as your bubble, since you're not intending to push with it. You're not going to be pushing up too much, and you'll usually still be within line of sight of the rest of your team. For example, this jump on Numbani would be a soft dive since your healers still have a line of sight of you, and you can get out easily. On the other hand, this dive to the back building on Hollywood is a hard dive. Your team can't see you, and you won't be getting healed. And you also need to use your jump ability again to get out, unlike here in this other jump when you can just walk down. Okay, now that I've briefly talked about Winston's playstyle, I'll talk a little bit now about his counters on every single roll. First, on tank, in my experience, Winston struggles when playing against Diva, Maga, and Hog, and he can also have some trouble against a good jungler queen. Diva is a really solid counter to Winston just because she can consistently and constantly pressure him and disrupt his dives. Although she can't 
block the damage of his Tesla Cannon. Her damage output is really solid and she can constantly stay on him. Since the cooldown on her flight is pretty short, you can either counter dive him or you can fly back to your team to help peel for them. Next up is Marga. Marga is another really solid counter for Winston since he can provide solid pressure to him at any range. Unlike D.Va, his movement isn't enough to chase after a Winston, but his damage from the miniguns is enough to basically instantly break the bubbles, and headshot damage from making you on fire makes dying basically guaranteed if you make any mistakes during a dive. And the third obvious counter for Winston on tank is Roadhog. Hog is another high damage character, and he also has some really decent CC in the form of his hook, which means that if he hooks you while you're in the air trying to get in or out of a dive, you are pretty much dead every time. And the final counter on the tank roll is Queen. I consider her to be a potential Winston counter since the damage output she has at close range is really scary, and she also has the potential of stopping Winston from diving by throwing her giant blade, similar to Roadhog with his hook. Okay, now moving on to the DPS roll. I'll only cover the top three in my opinion, which are Bastion, Echo, and Reaper. This video is dragging on quite a lot. I already have 15 minutes of audio footage to cut through, so I hope you guys can understand. First, Bastion. While Bastion can be really destructive against Winston when his turret form is up due to the insane DPS numbers, he's not too hard of a counter to play around since you can just avoid this by playing around his cooldowns. Echo is a bit more troublesome in my experience since she has a high damage output and her beam can break both you and your barrier really quickly when you're under half health which means she can kill you quite easily while you can't really dive her since she flies. You can definitely play around Echo, which is really annoying, especially if the Echo player is good. Finally for the DPS role is Reaper. He has two shotguns that do a lot of damage and you can't kill him because of his shift wraith form, so if he decides to peel for his team, he'll die whenever you dive, unless you're really good at bubble dancing. Now finally for the support role, I'll only be mentioning Brig. Other characters like Ilari and Lifeweaver can be pretty annoying to play against at times, but the only character that I find that Winston really does struggle against consistently is Brig. The cooldown on her whipshot is lower than the cooldown on your movement ability, so she can interrupt your dives really consistently. You can still play around her by using your bubble, but playing against a good Brig is a struggle regardless. Alright, that's it for this video guys. Sorry that it's taken me so long to upload, I've been a bit busy with school since testing starts soon. And honestly, I was also procrastinating a lot. I'm hoping to be able to do non-guide videos in the future, if you guys are interested in that, but honestly, I just want to be able to show a little bit of my personality on my channel, outside from just raging at this game while making tutorials. Anyways, thanks for watching and consider liking the video and subscribing. Please, please, please.